Because farming in New England was difficult, some colonists looked for other ways to earn a living. The geography of New England made it a good place to make a living from the sea. The rocky coast had many good harbors, and thick forests provided wood to build ships. Boston soon became the center for New England's growing shipbuilding industry. The ocean waters off the New England coast were full of fish. Many people made their living by catching and selling fish, and the fishing industry grew quickly. New Englanders caught 600,000 pounds of fish in 1641. By 1675, their catch was 10 times as much, 6 million pounds. The most common fish was cod which became a key part of New England's economy. Merchants sold much of the cod as exports to Europe and the West Indies. An export is a product sent to another country and sold. Sailors from New England also hunted whales. Colonists used whales to make products such as oil for lamps. By the 1700s, whaling was one of the most important industries in New England. The products of New England were often traded to other places. New England merchants shipped fish and lumber to Europe, Africa, and the West Indies. They traded these goods for imports to bring back to the colonies. An import is a product brought into one country from another. Ships from Europe carried imports such as tea and spices to sell in the colonies. The shipping routes between North America, Europe, and Africa formed an imaginary triangle across the Atlantic. These trade routes became known as the triangular trade. Many of New England's merchants and traders became rich from this trade. Some traders in the triangular trade made money by selling human beings. In Africa, traders bought enslaved men, women, and children who had been captured from their homes. They chained, they chained the Africans together and packed them into a crowded, filthy ships for the Middle Passage. The Middle Passage was the voyage from Africa to the West Indies. Many Africans died of disease or hunger along the way. Oladai Iquianu, who was enslaved as a boy, survived the Middle Passage. Years later, he described the horrors of the Middle Passage in a book. He wrote, I became so sick and low that I was not able to eat nor had I the least desire to taste anything. I now wished for death. In North America, the Africans who survived the ocean voyage were sold to colonists who forced them to work. During the 1600s and 1700s, hundreds of thousands of Africans were brought to the colonies in the slave trade. The slave trade was the business of buying and selling human beings. New England families were large, often with six or seven children. They lived in small wooden houses with few rooms or windows. Most light came from candles and lamps. Many homes had just one main room with a huge fireplace. A cooking fire was kept burning at all times. A table stood in the middle of the room for meals. At night, families slept on mattresses near the fire to keep warm. Wealthier families might have had a second story or loft where there would be more room for sleeping. A colonial home was more than just a building where a family ate and slept. It was also a workshop. Almost everything a family needed had to be grown or made by hand at home. Men and boys spent most of their time in working in the fields. They planted crops such as wheat and corn in the spring and harvested them in the fall. They built and repaired buildings and tools and took care of the family animals. 
Colonial women and girls were just as busy. They spent much of their time preparing and preserving food for the family. Women and girls made household items such as clothing, soap, and candles. During planting and harvest seasons, they also helped in the fields. Puritans wanted everyone to be able to read the Bible. Some parents taught the, their children how to read and write at home, but many New England towns had schools. In 1647, Massachusetts passed a law that said any town with 50 or more families had to build a school to teach reading and writing. Older boys could go on to study at colleges, such as Harvard College in Massachusetts. Harvard was founded in 1636 and was the first college in the 13 colonies. Although New England colonists worked hard, they made time for play. Sports, such as horse racing and bowling, were common. People also played an early version of baseball called town ball. In winter, colonists went ice skating or sledding down hills. Religion was a central part of New England life, but by the early 1700s, the church had become less powerful. Many colonists did not share the strong religious beliefs of their parents. Fewer people belonged to local churches. This changed in the 1730s when young, exciting ministers began speaking throughout the English colonies. Ministers traveled around New England urging people to renew their faith. New England colonists began to make religion a more important part of their lives. This renewed interest in religion became known as the Great Awakening because people felt as if they were waking up with a new faith. During the Great Awakening, new churches with new ideas developed throughout the colonies. Some of these churches even accepted women, African Americans, and American Indians. As the Great Awakening spread, people all over the colonies began to question their religious leaders and place more trust in their own beliefs.